are two implementations of sliding window protocol. Number one is the go back n, and second one is the selective repeat. Second one is the selective repeat. So initially we are going to discuss about what is the sliding window protocol, and then we will discuss about the go back n and the selective repeat protocols. So what is the sliding window protocol? So in the previous videos I have discussed that. Uh, in case of stop and wait ARQ to get 100% efficiency, we have to transmit more number of packets. And those number of packets is going to give you the window size. So what is that particular concept is, assume this is the sender and this is the receiver. And assume that window size is 4. So we are assuming that the window size is 4. Okay. So what will happen? The sender will transmit one packet that is a TT time. This packet is transmitting to the receiver. This packet is transmitting to the receiver. In meanwhile, sender will transmit more number of packets until you get the acknowledgement for this packet. Until you get the acknowledgement for this packet. This is acknowledgement. Okay. So you have to transmit more number of packets in that case. And when I am saying the sliding window protocol, the window size is 4. That means you are going to transmit more 4 packets. That is packet number 0, 1, 2 and 3. That means initially you are going to send, you are going to send the 3 packets. That is packet number 0, 1, 2, sorry, 4 packets. Packet number 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. So 0, 1, 2, 3. So these are the packets which you are transmitting initially. <coughs> sorry. Now 0, 1, 2, 3. In these packets, in these packets, so packet number 0, as soon as the packet number 0 is delivered and we get the acknowledgement for packet number 0, we are going to transmit the packet number 4. Right. So as soon as you know, see, when we are saying that uh, this is the window, that means we are transmitting these packets. As soon as we get the acknowledgement for packet number 0, we are going to transmit one more packet. So the window is going to shift at this direction. The window is going to shift at this direction. Then as soon as we get the acknowledgement for packet number 1, we are going to transmit one more packet. That is the packet number 5. So as soon as we get the acknowledgement for packet number 1, we are going to transmit one more packet. That is packet number 5. Again, as soon as we get acknowledgement for packet number 2, we are going to transmit one more packet that is a packet number 6. We are going to transmit one more packet that is a packet number 6. So as you can see, this, this is kind of a window which is sliding in the in this direction, right? So this window is sliding in this direction. Initially, we were transmitting packet number 1, 2 and 3. As soon as uh, the packet number 0 is transmitted, we slide the window and we are sliding the packets number 1, 2, 3 and 4. And then as soon as packet number 1 is transmitted, we slide the window and we are transmitting the packet number 2, 3, 4 and 5. 2, 3, 4 and 5. Okay, so in case of sliding window protocol, in any way, if I am writing like this, it is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. And if the window is currently at this position, then these packets which are at right, they are already, already transmitted, they are already transmitted, received and acknowledged and acknowledged. The wind packets uh, which are inside the window, they are currently transmitted, they are currently transmitted, but not acknowledged, but not acknowledged. And the packets which are at this left side of this window, they are the packets which are not yet transmitted, which are not yet transmitted, which are not yet transmitted. Okay, so this is the sliding window protocol. Okay, and these this window this window is this window is like a buffer. This window is like a buffer which will store the packets which are currently being transmitted. Because as soon as if we get if we know that any one of this packet is discarded here, we have to transmit these packets again. Discarded means either uh, it can be discarded due to network error, right? So if any any of the packet is discarded here, so we store these packets inside the buffer so that we can transmit the packets again in any condition where there's a kind of a mishappening in this sliding window protocol. Okay, so now 
in the previous video we have discussed about what should be the size of the sliding window protocol we need that if we want to get 100% efficiency that means if we want to get 100% efficiency then we should transmit tt plus 2 into tp upon tt packets that is the window size so we can also write it as window size is equal to 1 plus 2 into tp upon tt 1 plus 2 into tp upon tt what do i mean to say is assume assume that the transmission time is 1 seconds the transmission time is 1 second for a packet and the propagation time is assume 2 seconds and the propagation time is 2 seconds now what should be the window size what should be the window size to get 100% efficiency what should be the window size to get 100% efficiency then you can see that this is tt plus 2 into tp upon tt should be the window size to get 100% efficiency then what is the value of tt tt is 1 second plus 2 into tp tp is 2 into 2 that is 4 seconds upon tt which is equal to 1 second so this is this should be equal to 1 plus 4 which is equal to 5 packets which is equal to 5 packets so if we transmit 5 packet for this that particular scenario then we can get an efficiency which is 100 percent then we can get an efficiency which is 100 percent okay now if we send the packets in this manner and we know what is sliding mirror protocol then we need to answer a few things because obviously if you are going to design some kind of protocols then those protocols should obey the rules which you already established in some manner because uh, why we established some rules in the previous cases because they were important so what are what are the rules we need to identify we need to identify if we are going to send more than one packets then for those packets how many sequence numbers how many sequence numbers should we send or should we use how many sequence numbers should we use why because given a scenario that you have unlimited access to the sequence numbers you can always use new sequence numbers right so what do, what do i mean to say is assume uh, this is the sender this is the receiver and there's a communication of so, a lot of packets right so for example let us suppose the size of a packet is 1500 byte the size of a packet is 1500 bytes that means within this packet we are going to send data you are going to send other headers uh, of the packet you are going to send uh, the sequence numbers and so on so initially when we started the communication we are going to use very low sequence number for example sequence number one again sequence number two sequence number three sequence number four and so on but over a period of period of time the sequence number field will become so large become so large then most of the space or most of the bytes within this packet will be consumed by the sequence number because we are going to show the sequence number in a binary format so assume that we are going to have at least a uh, sequence number which is in millions or billions then we are going to use some bits and for those bits will become so large then they are going to use or consume most of the bits in the, inside this packet Right, so we need to have a sequence number field which, the, the, which should have an upper bound that at maximum you should use these many sequence numbers or you can say at minimum you can use these many sequence numbers so that the communication should be effective. So in case of sliding the protocol, we need to understand that we cannot use infinite number of sequence number, we can only use a finite number of sequence number and we should identify what should, what should be that number. Okay, and uh, we already know that what is the window size. So let us do one thing, let us identify this thing that minimum how many sequence numbers should be used so that this communication should be effective between the sender and the user. Okay. 